Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss delivery and risk of loss when it comes to the UCC under the Uniform Commercial Code. So what is this topic is all about? Well, there are two main issues we have to deal with. The delivery of goods and the point at what point the risk of the loss shift from the seller to the buyer. Simply put, when we purchase something, when does the risk of that loss shift to us, the buyer? What does it mean, the risk? The risk of loss is once you have the item, if something happened to that item, is it your responsibility? If it's your responsibility, you have the risk of loss. So the question becomes, at what point does this happen? So think about when you buy goods, textbook, laptop. How do you, how do you pick up those goods? Well, you can wait at your home and you can have them deliver, delivered to you or you can pick them up. It's important to know if you're supposed to pick them up or they will be shipped to you. Think about it. If you walk into a store, pick up the item from the shelves like a laptop. You put it in your car. You drive back to your home. Whose, whose risk is it? If something happened, God forbid, you got into an accident on the way home. The answer is you. Let's assume the seller ships the product to you. Well, that's going to depend on what the agreement is, and we'll talk about that later. So basically, we're trying to figure out the risk in transit. Who bears the risk of the loss? And this is what we'll be discussing in this recording. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with the basic duty of a seller. So when you have a seller, what's their basic duty? A merchant. Well, their basic duty is to keep the goods that meet the contract's requirement and notify the buyer that they can take delivery. Simply put, we have the items ready for you. You can pick them up. This is the basic duty of the seller. This is the general rule. Though many contracts might specify different terms. What's different terms? I, I, you know, we, I want to deliver this to you. Then we can agree on the de delivery term. But the basic duty is I have the product ready. I segregate them for you. You can come, in, come to the store and pick them up. For example, a furniture store maker must, must store a custom table until the customer is ready to collect and must inform the customer when it's ready. That's all what the seller's duty is. It's ready. You can pick it up. So let's talk about when the contract does not specify the method of delivery. Well, if the contract does not specify, it means the contract is silenced. The UCC rules on delivery location and timing apply. What does that mean? It means the risk of loss typically shift to the buyer once delivery occurs. So once they get you the goods, then if anything happened, it shifts to the buyer. The risk of loss, again, means who suffers the loss if the goods are damaged or lost. Once they deliver to you, you are responsible for them. Now, they could be delivered to you at the store. They could be delivered to you from China to your home. It doesn't matter. Once you receive them, the risk is, is yours. If the goods are damaged after the risk transfer, the buyer still owes the payment. Now, you cannot say, I'm not going to pay because the goods were destroyed. They were your goods. They were destroyed, like, in quote, under your watch. Therefore, you have to pay. So if a bookshop delivers book to a school and the books are damaged after delivery, after they, after they arrive to the school, they, they, they're receiving the part in the school, pick them up. It's the school's property. Then the school is responsible for the loss and must pay for the books. Or sometime we can agree on these terms in the contract. Whose responsibility is it during shipment? The primary rule is the agreement between the buyer and the seller. If the agreement is there, then we have to look at the agreement. If they decide when and where delivery occurs or when the risk loss passes, the agreement is the key. If they agree amongst each other, then then that will that will rule the transaction. An online electronic store might agree with the buyer that the risk of loss passes when the couriers deliver the items to the buyer's address. And we're going to see what the term is. But if that's what they agree on, well, so it's the seller's responsibility until they get it to you to the buyer. 
in the absence of specific agreement. In the absence of a specific agreement, we have to look whether we have a non-carrier cases or carrier cases. What's non-carrier cases? This involves when the buyer drives their own vehicle, usually pick up the goods from the seller's business. So basically, most purchases, well, not most, because nowadays we order a lot online, but simply put, when you drive your car to a shopping mall or to a shopping center and you pick up something, that's a non-carrier cases. We're not using a carrier. What's a carrier? A carrier like UPS, uh, DHL, uh, FedEx, US, US Postal Service. So buying a TV from an electronic store and taking it home yourself. Then we have the carrier cases. This involves a third party carrier to ship the goods. For example, when you order a piece of art online and having it shipped via a courier service, courier, FedEx, DHL, UPS. Well, what's the risk of loss in a non-carrier cases? Well, now we have to be careful. If it's a non-carrier cases, simply put, you walk into the store, you walk into the store and you pick up an item. Or you walk into a place to the seller and you picked up an item. Well, we have to be careful. If the seller is not a merchant, what does that mean? It means you purchase the item from an individual, from your neighbor, from what we called a yard sale. The seller is not a merchant. You did not walk into a store. You find something on Facebook from another person. You find it online. You, you drove to their house and you pick it up. The, the risk of loss passes to the buyer once the seller offers the good for delivery. So as soon as they offer the goods for delivery, it's your, it's your risk. And you're, we're going to see an interesting example. If the, if the seller is a merchant, the risk of loss passes to the buyer when the buyer actually takes possession of the goods. Look at the difference. It means once they tell you, you can pick it up, it's ready for you, it becomes your loss if it's, if it's a non-merchant. Well, if it's a merchant, as long as you don't pick it up, it's not your loss. Once you pick it up, once you take possession of it, it's yours. And we're going to look at an example. Example of a non-merchant, a, per a person is selling their old piano to a neighbor. The risk of loss passes to the neighbor once the seller offered the piano for pickup. So once they tell you, you, you can pick up the piano, that's it. It's your loss. It's your risk. So you, you have to know this. They, basically, they made it available to you. Buying a, pia buying a laptop from a tech store, which is a merchant, the risk passes to you when you take the laptop from the store. And you're going to see the difference. Merchant seller. Merchant seller. When dealing with a merchant seller, a merchant, the rules regarding passing of the risk of losses are slightly different from that from those non-merchant. Under the UCC, the risk the risk of loss in a transaction involved in a merchant does not pass until the buyer actually takes physical possession. I know I'm repeating myself, but that's that's important. There's a key distinction to protect the buyers when dealing with professional sellers or merchant. And also you have to think about it. The merchant, the buyer, they have the ability to hold the item for you. They deal in this type of merchandise, so they're supposed to protect it. Steve runs a computer store and agrees to sell a laptop to Bill for $400. We are a merchant here. Bill pays the Steve the $400 in advance. Steve prepares the laptop and bills for Bill and inform him that it's ready for pickup. However, before Bill can pick up the laptop, the laptop is destroyed in a fire at Steve's store, though no fault of Steve's. So there was a fire, it was destroyed. In this scenario, since Steve is a merchant, the risk of the loss remain with Steve until Bill physically takes possession of the laptop. Despite the payment, Steve is responsible for the loss of the laptop. Why? Because Steve is a merchant. Therefore, that's his responsibility. He must either provide a replacement computer to Bill or refund his money. It's as simple as that. This rule is in place to protect consumers, ensuring that professional sellers bear the risk for the goods until they are safely in the hands of the buyer. Let's change the scenario. Same exact scenario, except that Steve is your neighbor. It's a non-merchant and you purchased their laptop. You paid them in advance and they told you, look, the laptop is ready. You can pick it up anytime. You waited a day or two. The, the home was destroyed in a fire. Guess what? Steve don't have to pay you because Steve made the laptop available to you. Steve is not a merchant. You're supposed to pick it up. Why? Because as soon as Steve told you it's ready for you, whether you paid him or not, once he told you it's ready for you, then it's your loss. It's, it's You're supposed to pick it up. Now, what happened in the real world, Steve may refund your money. That, that's a different story, but we're talking legally the difference between merchant and a non-merchant. 
Let's talk about when common carrier is involved. In a transaction involving common carrier, once again, common carrier are shipping companies or postal service. The contract is classified as either shipping contract or a destination contract. I'm gonna, you know, we're, we're gonna emphasize on this, but it's pretty simple. This classification determine when the risk of loss passes from the buyer to the seller. So based on the contract, is it shipping contract or is it destination contract? Let's talk about shipping contract. In a shipping contract, the risk of loss passes to the buyer as soon as the goods are delivered to the carrier. So if you're selling something, you gave the goods to the carrier. This is the shipping company. This is UPS, United Postal Service. As soon as you place those in the, in the truck, you're the seller. Now, well, guess what? The risk of losses passes to the buyer. It's as simple as that. The seller's responsibility is to get the goods to the carrier. Once this is done, any risk is the buyer's responsibility. Oceanic Electronics agreed to sell and ship 50 laptops to a retailer, TechWord. And this is a shipment contract. That's the deal. Once Oceanic Electronics hands over the laptop to the UPS, guess what? It's TechWord's loss. Once the shipping company takes possession of the laptop, TechWord bears the risk of the loss. If the laptops are damaged or in transit or lost in transit, TechWord still has to pay. Oceanic Electronics because it's a shipping contract. Destination contract. In this contract, the risk of loss passes to the buyer when the goods reach the specified destination. Look, they are delivering the goods to the seller and the seller tenders delivery. Tenders means offer, physically offer, say here's the goods. Let's assume furniture store agrees to sell and deliver a custom dining table to a customer's home. This is a destination contract because we, we promise to deliver it to their home. The risk of loss stays with the furniture, furniture store, artisan furniture, until the table is delivered and tendered the customer to their home. If the table gets damaged on the way, the furniture store is responsible for the loss and must replace it or refund the customer's money if they paid. Why? Because it's a destination contract. Now, there's a term we called free on board. What's free on board? Free on board, FOB or free on board, is a term used in shipping to indicate who's responsible for the goods and when the risk of loss transfer from the seller to the buyer. The term is always followed by a location. For example, FOB New York, FOB Los Angeles, which is crucial in determining the nature of the contract and the point at which the risk of loss passes. So we're going to explain what's FOB destination what's fob shipping fob and the location then the location let's talk about f fob seller's place and notice fob seller's place is a shipping contract and notice i i kept the same picture from from the shipping contract because it's the same thing the only thing i'm going to be adding is the word fob seller's place it means it's a shipping contract if the contract states fob seller's location it's FOB and the seller is location. That's the, that's the contract. It's a shipping contract. It's called FOB shipping point. What does that mean? It means the seller's responsibility is to deliver the goods to the carrier. Once the goods are with the carrier, the risk of the, the, risk, of, the risk of the loss is with the buyer. So once they place those laptops in the truck, the buyer is responsible for those. So once the goods are in the truck, the, the buyer is responsible. Blue tech orders computer component from a manufacturer computer parts with the term FOB computer parts. When we say FOB computer parts, computer parts is the seller. Computer part is the seller. And it's FOB computer parts warehouse. It means that the risk of loss transfer to the buyer as soon as they place those goods, those computer parts in the truck. Because it's FOB comp part. FOB comp parts part is the seller. This means the contract is a shipping document. It's FOB shipping point, FOB shipping point. So comp parts must deliver the components to the carrier, some sort of a shipping company. Once the carrier receives it, Bluetech, the buyer, bears the risk in transit. Bears the risk in transit. If the components are damaged or lost in transit, Bluetech is still responsible for the payment. Let's take a look at FOB buyer's place when it's it's fob and it's the buyer's place or it's called fob uh, buyer's place is called destination contract which we already talked about if the contract state fob and puts the buyer's place not the seller's location it's a destination contract it's fob destination 
the seller bears the risk of the loss until the goods reach the buyer's location are are and are tendered for delivery. Same thing as the destination contract, except the term is, you see it, FOB destination, and the destination of the person will be the destination, FOB destination. So Cozy Home Furniture orders a batch of sofas from manufacturer, sofa crafter, with the term FOB Cozy Homes. It means FOB D buyer's destination what does that mean this is a destination contract it's fob destination cozy home cozy home is the destination what does that mean it means sofa crafters must transport the sofas all the way to cozy's home furniture the risk of loss remain with them sofa crafters until cozy home receive and accept the sofas if the sofas are damaged and route sofas crafter is responsible for the loss so just you have to know, FOB destination is a destination contract. FOB shipping is a shipping contract. Let's take a look at non-conforming goods. When a seller breaches a contract by sending non-conforming goods, what's non-conforming goods? Meaning goods that do not match what they agreed upon. So I, I ordered five uh, blue sweaters, you send me five red sweaters. It's a different, it's a different, uh, items that we agreed on. The risk of loss remains with the seller regardless of the original shipping terms. If the goods are non-confirming, the risk of loss stays with the seller. This rules apply unless the buyer decide to accept those wrong sweaters. If we decide to accept those wrong sweaters, obviously it is our goods now. Example, Elegant Furniture ordered 50 office chairs from a manufacturer, chair company with specific requirement for ergonomics feature and color. The, the chairs were specific. Chair company, however, mistakenly send the chairs that do not have the requested ergonomics features and are of a different color, non-conforming. Regardless of the shipping terms, FOB shipping, FOB destination, the risk of loss does not pass to the buyer due to the breach of contract by the chair company sending non-conforming goods. Now, if elegant furniture chooses to accept, so you know what? We're going to keep those. We'll accept them. We're, we're going to accept those non-conforming goods. The chairs, despite the differences, then the risk of the loss transferred to them from the, the point of acceptance. Once they accept it, it's theirs. If they do not accept the chairs and reject them, chair company responsible for the risk of loss because they send the non the non-conforming goods. They would need to either send a replacement that conform to the contract specification or handle any loss or damage to the non-confirming chairs themselves. Why, why do we use this? This principle ensures that the buyer is not unfairly burdened with the risk of loss for goods that does not meet their contractual obligation. You send me something I did not even order and you want me to be responsible for it. This provides a safeguard against receiving and paying for unsatisfactory product. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. In a shipment contract, when does the risk of loss pass to the buyer? What is a shipment contract? So do you understand the difference between shipment contract and destination contract? Shipment contract is what? Shipment contract is the same as FOB shipping. What is FOB shipping? FOB shippings mean as soon as the seller, as soon as the seller gives the product, as soon as the seller gives the goods, to the common carrier, to the carrier, to the carrier, and the carrier could be UPS, FedEx, DHL, then it's the buyer's good. The buyer's good. The buyer's bears the loss. So, in a shipping contract, when the goods reach the buyer's location, no. The seller gives the goods to the carrier. That's out. When the seller receives payment, payment has nothing to do with this. They could pay later. That's That, that, has, a, that has nothing to do with the risk of loss. When the goods are delivered to the common carrier, this is what it looks like, FOB shipping, shipment contract. Therefore, I would see C is a good answer. Let's make sure D is out. After the buyer has inspected and accepted the goods. No, no, that's not, that's not when the risk of loss occurred. The risk of loss, if it's a shipment contract, when the goods are delivered to the common carrier. In contrast to, we have what we called destination contract, when the goods reaches the buyer location, and we call this FOB, 
destination. Make sure you know the difference between FOB destination, FOB shipment, easy points on the CPA exam. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs that's going to help you prepare for the CPA exam. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career. The CPA exam is worth it. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.